video snake. How great is our God? Welcome to Divine Christian Church. A Christian fellowship where we serve God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. Our weekly services are as follows. Monday to Saturday, Divine Support Daily Revival Fellowship. From 8 to 9 p.m. London time. On Sunday, we fellowship from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. London time. Our other services are as follows. Every day we have our seven days a week Operation Push Intensive Midnight Prayers phone conference from 11.45 p.m. to 1 a.m. London time. Every Saturday we have our Save One Soul Per Week Evangelism from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. London time. For more details, please call or WhatsApp plus 447908338. 4348 Divine Christian Church We are a Bible believing Pentecostal and evangelical church with a strong appetite for the uncompromising propagation of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ John 4:23 to 24 Our mission is to find develop and make ready a people that will not only achieve an all-round fulfillment here on earth but more importantly, spend eternity in heaven. John 10.10 10. Our vision is to optimize the benefits that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ present by building an international Christian community that is fully maximized in their spirit, soul and body. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 and 3 John Sudden dangers, sudden fallings, and sudden accidents. All 
all sorts of unnecessary things, whether like, like kidnapping or gunfires or robberies and all the rest of that, Father Lord, knife crimes in this country, Father Lord. We put this all in front of your hands this morning, Father Lord, and we we'll pray that you continue to cover our families, Father Lord. Rebarabozo kiti rabarabozi kita rabarabaraba zebra bozo borolo kiti rabarabaraboza kara. We got you to pray, Father Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Father Lord. Give us the power to do your work, Father Lord. Thank you, Zegara Bori kira rabarabozo kita rabar. Thank you, Father Lord. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's continue to commit the service this morning to the hands of the Lord. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come here this morning and let the Holy Spirit operate in our lives, Father Lord. We pray, Father Lord, the true word of God will be preached here this morning, Father Lord. As he says, as the more word of God was preached, it prevailed mightily, Father Lord. Let's continue to pray that the word of God will be preached here today mightily, Father Lord. There will be no false prophets, no false doctrines. Let's continue to pray, Father Lord. We continue to commit this service this morning into the hands of the Lord this morning. We continue to pray, Father Lord, for the word of God, Father Lord. As he says, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp as two-headed swords, Father Lord. We continue to pray that it will be used mightily, Father Lord. It will prevail, Father Lord, everywhere it goes today, Father Lord. As the word says in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, Father Lord. We continue to pray, Father Lord, that the word will continue to be used. There will be no false doctrines, there will be no false teachings, Father Lord, but it's the true good word of God, Father Lord, that Jesus Christ died and was buried and resurrected again, Father Lord, that we believe that we believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father Lord. We thank him for shedding his blood on the cross for us, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, let your name be glorified, Father Lord. We continue to commit everything into your hands this morning, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray, amen. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray, amen. Let's continue to pray for the church, the Divine Christian Church and its members, Father Lord. We thank the Lord for providing a place of worship. We pray that the church will continue to go for that for every member. Every place we go for that, Lord, we continue to pray for this church. Let's continue to pray. Thank you, Father Lord, for providing a place of worship. We continue to pray for the church, for its leaders, its members, everyone, the ushers, the teachers, the pastors, the praise and worship, Father Lord. We commit all this into your hands this morning, Father Lord. We pray that you will guide them through the Holy Spirit, Father Lord. Let the Holy Spirit continue to lead them, Father Lord. Let the church continue to be expanded in all four corners of the world today, Father Lord. We continue to pray for this church to grow spiritually, Father Lord, in everything we are looking for, Father Lord. We continue to pray for other projects like that. I you know the fasting and praying programs, Father Lord. Everything in this front, Father Lord. We put this in front of your hands this morning, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. Let your name be glorified, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to hand over now to the praise and worship. Who is the praise and worship team? Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I believe we're excited to be in his presence, and if we're not, we should ask that our hearts are open to soak in everything from praise and worship to the word, to the testimonies, and all the prayers that we will pray and lift up in God's hands this morning and afternoon. Amen. I have made you too small in my life, O oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie. 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Okay, so if what I've taken from this, if you go through it through, um, verse by verse. So the first verse is the Bible is describing us as being um, the salt of the earth. And obviously we use salt to season food, but salt is also a preservative. And so here in this context, God is saying that because we're the salt of the earth, he's saying that we're preserving his followers and people that follow Christ are preserving the world from corruption. And he also goes on to say that um, if the salt loses its flavour, then it basically becomes worthless. It's, that's it saying that if, we, if us as followers lose the qualities of what makes a good um, follower of Christ, then we then lose our abilities and the abilities that God has given us to, to do our purpose and do our task and preserve the world from corruption. Verse 14 then goes on to tell us that, um, that we are the light of the world. I'm pretty sure most of us know that Jesus is described as being the light of the world. I think it's John chapter 8 verse 12 says, Jesus tells his disciples, I'm the light of the world and whoever follows him, that they should not walk in darkness, but they should be given the light of life. And so if God is described as being the light of the world, because we are from God and not of God, us two then are the light of the world. Um, and also in that verse, it tells us that it's a city, well, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So that's then saying that we are, our responsibility as believers is not just to be saved and reach salvation, but also to enlighten the rest of the world. It's not to keep what God has given us to ourselves. We shouldn't be selfish in that sense, but spread his word out to, to the nations and to those that are not believers yet. Um, and it's important that with what God has given us, we use it because by us becoming saved and becoming believers, we need to make sure that our lives and the way we live our lives is can be used as a window for others, non-believers, to allow the, the light of God to shine through our lives so that other people that are not saved can now be saved unto God. And then for verse 15, it tells us again that we shouldn't try to hide this light and that God has given us a gift so we shouldn't try to hide it from the nations. And then for verse 16, again tells us to let God's light shine through us. And it's important that we, and the way we work, we walk will be work in the world, we need to make sure that we're setting a good example and that we're partaking in activities that will glorify the name of the Lord and we shouldn't be doing anything to put God to shame because we are his disciples, we're his followers and if we want others to come to onto him, we need to set a good example of what a, a, a follower of Christ is like. So in summary, even though you've received your salvation, it doesn't just end there, you need to make sure that you're allowing God's light to shine through you to help others. It's not by our own hands, but it's by the hands of the Lord. So we pray that, our prayer today is that we will allow God's light to shine through us and that we'll be able to, God will help us and give us the strength to stay away from activities that may dim the light that he's given us. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture again, I think it's Matthew 15, I think, 5.15. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have the hymn now by Mommy Joy. Praise the Lord.
blessings by you in Jesus' name. Amen. Some, you don't even, he keeps coming. No, sh- 
showing that there is because you and I know when they are looking for you. And majority of the time, it's not them. It's the enemy that schemes all these things yeah. to confuse you and see how you will stand. So please, when people give such testimony, we should be jumping because and as the world they say, another one has been bitten by the dust. Isn't that what God has done another marvelous thing? And it is not just it's for us. So that in future, when you say whatever it is, it might not be the same, but you will remember what your brother went through and that God saved you. Because when you make an error, and then sometimes, bye-bye. So we give God all the glory Amen. for the victory that he gave you because we know that it could have been pear-shaped. So we thank God for his goodness and for his mercies. Amen. 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 And I use this, I stand in this testimony and I claim it for a dear brother. He's actually a pastor who is going, well, going through the same thing in America. He's a manager of whatever, and one of his staff has made an error, and they are looking for his head. So I, I claim it and I say, Father, as he has done it for you, yes. he will do it for him also. Amen. It's because he's been with that company for 17 years. Do you see how the enemy is wicked? Amen. 17 years, somebody's error, but because you are the leader, as you all know in the West, if you're a leader and your subordinate, that's the error, it is you that you need to resign. So we pray and we claim this, we stand on it and we say, Amen. They say for him, Amen. Amen. Any other testifiers in the house? Brother Testimony. Lord, Lord. Shall we clap for him? Hallelujah. 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 Please follow me to just say this soul to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You are always there to help me. Hallelujah. You are always And 
I needed Nigerian passport seriously, you know, because my passport has just expired and I needed the passport urgently. And um, some time ago, you know, the Lord has given me the grace when I needed passports, you know, I just went there that day. One of the generals I met in that particular program, because it's a high profile, um, people that come to that event, they were, I mean, I just, I just spoke to the person, he said, uh, one cordial, he said I should come over to the Nigerian house and I got the passport. Any Nigerian know what I'm talking about? <laughs> to get Nigerian passport is not a joke. But as the Lord may have it, this time around, I was thinking, oh, maybe that grace, or who knows? Because the other person seems like he has returned back to Nigeria, he has resigned or something, or retired. You know. Unfortunately, as the Lord may have it, I met this person. You know, when I went to, I just went to the toilet, I saw him there. I said, sir, please, I need your help. He said, what for? You're already blessed. You don't need it. He said, I said, I said, I have an appointment with Nigeria House and I need passport urgently because I have some events that maybe I don't have any other choice but to, you know, cancel them because of the passport. You know, but as the Lord may have it, the man said, is that all? It's not a problem. I thought, <laughs> you know, he said, I'll give you one of my boy's number. He worked in Nigerian house, just like that. You know, as the Lord may have it, I just went there. I told the person that I'm here sent by this person. But as the Lord may have it, as I speak to you, the, the passport is out. Amen. And the people that are on the queue, they are not going to get that passport. People that took the passport the same day till October or November. But I'm just here to give God the glory. And I'm here to give God all the honor. I just want to thank him for the lives of my kids. I want to thank him for my wife and everything he's doing for us. I give him all the glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. That is how we should be. Children of God, we shouldn't wait for things. Bless the name of the Lord. When we go places, doors should automatically open for us. Amen. Amen. Any other testifiers in the house? And yes, shall we clap our hands? Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for the gift of life. Um, we went away last week and uh, lunch in a hotel. And uh, because we went out for family meeting, family outing. And in the hotel, we lunch. And then I just I woke up in the morning and uh, I had a sharp pain on my elbow. And I looked at it. Yeah, I saw two, something like two points from like a, we had a used needle to trick someone, you know. I was like, what is it? And it was bleeding. I said, God, what is this? I looked around, I couldn't see nothing. And uh, actually it was that that woke me up. It was that pain that woke me up. It was not a scratch, just two. I was like, is this? Is this snake bite or what? What is this? I was scared within myself. So what I did, because I can't, I went with my anointing oil. So I just took my anointing oil and poured it on it. I started reading some uh, Bible verses into it, you know. And uh, the pain stopped and the bleeding stopped. So but, uh, what I want to say, um, in the Bible, because it is written uh, gospel according to Mark 16, verse 18. And it says, They shall take in Mark 16, verse 18, it says, They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not uh, hurt them. They shall.
shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I use this verse because God, if God is not with me, I don't know what it was that beat me. I don't know what it was, whether it was snake or something. But I, when, I, when I went out from there to, for the breakfast with my family and other family members, I now showed it to them. I narrated what happened. And uh, my one of our relatives there told me, oh, she's going to show me something from her phone. I said, what is it? She said she recorded a video in the room where she, because we, we all were in the same hotel, Premier Inn. So she now brought out a video, a black spider, you know, on her bed. She said when they wanted to go to bed, because we came back around after 12 from the event, you know, going to bed. We prayed in our room, we prayed and went and shared our Bible, you know, read our Bible. And then, then they are in their room. So she now sh sh opened it, her phone, you know, and showed me the video. She she didn't take pictures, she videoed it, black spider, and it was very fast. When she saw it, it now went under their bed. So I said, wow, so it was a spider that beat me. So I said, God, thank you. I don't know what would have happened if she didn't show me that. And when I took my phone to, you know, to, uh, to look around the hot day room where we were, I saw spider webs all over there. I said, well, thank you, Jesus. I don't know what, I don't know what it is. But I am not sick because when I came back, it was, it was a bit itchy and painful at the same time. So when I came back from there, I went to check myself in the hospital and uh, they said it's not something I should be scared of, but if, if, it's, um, if I get any pain or fever, I should return back. So I said, well, God has taken control over it. And my second testimony is uh, about my job. I go since, and I have testified about it long ago, and said that was just playing up, playing up. So the company, they, were, they said they were waiting for the, um, the reference, and uh, the other reference, they've all come through. The, uh, when the, the, the educational one, they said, I told them the school is on, on, is on holiday now, and school is going to resume September. So waiting for the educational one without giving me a job. I mean, it doesn't make sense. You can see, because I gave them the, uh, the info from the school, and they said they, 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 they have not, they have written to them, nobody has responded. I said, well, it's there, the school is there, it's not in Africa, it's in this UK, so you can always call them. September is not far from here, and I cannot continue waiting. You know, you have offered me a job since June, and I've been waiting for nothing, just for ordinary friends. Then my DBS came one week. So if I'm a criminal or, or whatever, I don't know. It should, you, you will not, my DBS will not come back. So why delay this? I have to speak to them and say, if you can give me this job, I let her, you, you should just give me all my documents as, you know, uh, submitted to you. So they now, they, after some days, she now said to me, she's going to call me back. Let her call the head office. So she called the head office and uh, the no what they discussed and uh, she called me and said, oh, when do you want to stop, uh, start? I said, as soon as possible. So to, be, to God be that glory, I'm going to start tomorrow. So I am, I am here to thank God for what he has done for me. It is only him and him alone that can do it. So may he receive all that glory, all that honor, all that power, all that adoration, all dominion be to him. Give me a in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for your life. Whatever beats you, you are healed from it. And we thank God because I believe the Bible says that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And your second testimony, we thank God because what you declare and decree in the name of the Lord stands. The Bible says that forever, O God, your word is settled. The job was given to you. You came here, you stood, you thanked him, you declared it. We praise God for it. The enemy can only frustrate. So it, it is done. It is settled. Amen. Unless you tell God that I don't, I no longer want it. It is yours. Amen. Amen. Any other testifiers in the house, please? Bless the name of Jesus. Anybody else to testify? If nobody's testifying, I have a testimony. And you know, sometimes testimony is not just about 
the car and God. This yeah. testimonies can be things that I am going through spiritually. For me, those are the big testimonies that you don't know. Things that I maybe pray about could be weaknesses that nobody knows, but it's my cross and it's between God and I. But when God, I, I say God winks, when God, you are passing through challenges or whatever it is, and God still keeps you, and he holds you, and when mommy Joyce sings to this, the hymn, and that's why when Brother Testimony, that song was just for me, that's why it just hit me. But when she sang the hymn, it's the last verse. It hit me so strong. And for me, it's God talking. It was literally God talking. He says, I read, he says, sorry, I didn't bring my glasses. No guilt in life. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell. No scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Amen. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I will stand. Amen. And that is my declaration to the enemy. In the power of Christ we stand. Amen. No matter what the enemy, no matter what he throws at us, no matter how fierce, this should always be that devil bring it on. Nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. He can make you feel guilty. He can make people scheme against you, misunderstand you, say all manner of things. But when we stand in the love of in the love of Christ, and when we give all our hearts and say, Father, it doesn't matter. Because sometimes the enemy can let the very people that you, you know should do better rise up against you, what are you going to do? Run out? No. no. What, we, what did he do? Back in his it's his, and when he was being crucified, he stayed put. Yeah. His very people deserted him. He turned and looked to the right, left, there was no one. But he said, but Bible says that, looking at what was before him, he was so focused on what was before him, he despised, he, he neglected everything that would lose shift his focus of what he was created to do. So this is my testimony to the enemy. That no schemes, the guilt that sometimes he let us go through, no lies, nothing will separate me. I am hooked, synced, whatever they say it in Christ Jesus. I am not moving and you can make me go mad to whatever you can't. But I belong to Christ. Amen. And that I know it. I know it so well. Yes. And I am so grateful. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Father, this morning we just want to thank you for all the testimonies. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for the healings. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the, the, the breakthroughs. We thank you, Father, for the victories, the battles that you fought for us. We bless you, Father, for Bra uh, TJ's testimony. We praise you. We adore you. We give you all the glory. We thank you, oh God. And we pray, asking that if per, per, per adventure, anybody in our midst is going through this challenge, Lord, we raise a standard, oh God, in the heavens. And we declare that the God, Father, total victory, oh God. May the blood of Jesus Thank you, Father, for our testimonies.
Testament that as children of God, we have heard this morning that we are the salt and the light of the earth. And therefore, because we are the light, wherever we go, may doors open unto us, O oh God. May several doors open unto your children, because we are the light of the world, and because your glory is upon us. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. We honor you. We cover all the testimonies with the blood of Jesus. And we ask that the God that the second session, let your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister, for the wonderful testimony service. And we're going to continue with our praise and worship. Sister Felicia, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Still in that attitude of thanksgiving, let us please stand on our feet. Let us begin to appreciate God for all the great and wonderful things. You know, sometimes when we hear testimonies, it looks as if it's so far away until when it happens to you, you realize how how grateful, how, how God has loved us, how he has fought for us. Many times we hear things happen to people, it's like, oh, well, yeah, that's it. But we don't know what God is doing in our lives. So I want us to reflect on those testimonies in our heart. And so many times God has fought for us that we don't even know. Many times God has prevented a lot of things that would have gone wrong. Let us begin to reflect that in our heart as we give glory to the most high God. For all the testimonies, for more that he's about to do.
Christ, Master Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank the name of the living God for those of us who can attend today. And also give my greetings to those of us who are online on YouTube, on Facebook, those of us on the phone. God really bless you. Thank you everyone for coming. It is already well with your spirit, it is well with your soul, it is well with your body. Everything will work together for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Want to bless God for those mighty, mighty, beautiful testimonies that we have had. God is good indeed. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause for that. Hallelujah. 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 And also, those of us who have come in fellowship with us for the first time, can we put our hands together for Jesus today? You don't give us a way of mind today, it's your first day. Oh, yes, 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 my precious family. If it's your first time, for a day, my sisters, some of you just get up for a few of you just get up for a few of you. My God, my God, my God, what a beautiful family. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. This is my daughter, you are ready to go. Can we give you some microphone to say hello to us? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, Sister Ephesus and Ashbu, God bless you, my wonderful, wonderful sister. I've known her for some time. The way we met again is by divine connection. Hallelujah. Come, put your hands again for Jesus. Put your hands again for Jesus. The way I met Sister Ephesus and Ashbu, we must know that God connected us. And since then, myself, her family, uh, her husband. Let me give them the microphone to say hello to us. Can I put everybody on this spot? Yes. Okay, all oh, our first timers. Hello, my sister, how are you? Can I put you on this spot? God bless you. Say hello. Say hello. hello. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, just give for Jesus. My friend, how are you, sir? You look like you want to preach already. What's your name? Derek, how are you? Are you happy to be here? Why? Because to pray, so you want to spread your warfare prayers out at any moment. This one is already my friend, I know this one far back. How are you, my girl? Me <laughs> with this one, I'm far back friend. You okay? Lovely girl. So that feels nice, but I met you. No. <laughs> Say hello to the congregation. Hello, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen. 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 Conversation back and forth, back and forth. 
So that conversation, counseling, talking, to and fro, discussing, this discussion has been going on for a long time, okay? But this week, both of them finally came, somebody's running in the spirit, people in the spirit are laughing. This church, that's why everybody in this church are in the spirit. You see that? Okay, so this week, Brother David and Sister Camille came up to me and then they said, that counseling, that conversation that we've been having, that both of them would like the church to bless their marriage, bless somebody, 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 So they're thinking of the, what is the date? 30th of September, okay. So if you have any appointment on your diary for 30th of September, I want you to go and cancel it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So 30th of September is a Saturday. My brother and my sister were going to be joining them in matrimonial blessing. Okay? <laughs> so what that means is that on that day we're going to close all the roads. Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to divert all the traffic because from New Cross right to Lawrence House. Okay, even the mayor will tell you we can no come walk that day. <laughs> you know the mayor lives in some mayor's office is just about come to minutes away. So we put red carpet on New Cross and tell the mayor, please give us space on the 30th of September. Hallelujah. So I can you have anything to tell us? Say hello to us. Okay. <laughs> so they say Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go, 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 go. Praise the Lord. Praise I just want to give God the thanks, the honor, and the glory, and the praise. I go through a lot because um, my son passed away last year, but you know, I just want to stay strong in the Lord. And thanks for Pastor Eugene calling me from time to time, encouraging me. We have counseling. But you know, I don't have much to say, but I just want to give God the honor and the glory, what he, have, what he about to do for me and more to become in the mighty name of Jesus. And I need all of your prayers. It's not easy for me to lose a child, you know. I just want all of you to have me in your prayer Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. Come on, let's for Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so that is the deal now, okay? So we are getting them ready for a matrimonial blessing on the 30th of September. Get all your friends and family. Oh, I'm saying your friends and family as if I'm going providing the refreshment. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get the details later on, okay? But just to keep them in prayer, remember them in prayer, you communicate the rest to the church later on, okay? Father God, just stretch forth your hands towards them right now. Father, as they are preparing for this wonderful union, we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they have decided to do the right thing the right way. And because this is the right thing the right way they want to do, Father, we build a wall of fire around them. Keep them on board and strengthen them in Jesus' name. Amen. I put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's take the word of God. Heavenly Father, we want to bless you in a very extraordinary way. We're about to take your word right now in Psalm 119, verse 105. You said the light, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. As we're about to go into ministration of your word, Holy Spirit, take over and do what only you can do for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's take the word of God. Um, as we go, so from about a couple of um, uh, days now, we will do this series. We entitled it um, The Name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Name of Jesus. And the text for this teaching, the main text for this teaching has been taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. So, what are the objectives? Why are we doing this teaching? Number one, to point non-Christians to Jesus. So somebody hears this message, they are not born again. Uh, they get convicted and they get saved. Number two, 
is to bring revival among existing Christians. So those of us who are already Christians, the Bible says those people who think they stand, they must take it this day before. So this is actually part 10 of this series. It means we've been doing this series of teaching for 10 sessions. And what we're going to do today is to quickly round up and conclude this session. Amen. But first, a quick recap. What have we done so far? In part one, I'm going to go quickly now, we set the context. Essentially, we introduced the topic, the name of Jesus, set the context in part one. Then we move to part two. And in part two, we set an outline on how we want to approach this series of teachings to help us get best value from it. And then we also did a very quick overview of the concept, the topic matter. Then we moved to part three. And in part three, we started looking at Jesus, but the historical Jesus. I wouldn't go through everything we've said again. The reason I wouldn't do that is because all the teachings are on YouTube. If you want to follow all the teachings we've done so far, you will find them on YouTube. All you need to type is Divine Support Daily Revival Foundation. Let me go back so you can see it. If you go to YouTube or Facebook and you type Divine Support Daily Revival Fellowship as, as it is displayed on the screen, it will pull out all the teachings that we've done so far, all the teachings that we've done so far, including part one, part two, part three, part four, part five of this series. So, we go to YouTube, type Divine Support Daily Revival Fellowship. If you type it exactly the way it is on the screen, it pulls out all the teachings that we've done so far. I think YouTube does it very nicely, Facebook does it nicely, date by date by date. So we can't go through all the teachings now purely because we don't have enough time to do that. But we looked at the historical Jesus. We said there are two dimensions of Jesus. The historical Jesus is the Jesus that was growing up like um, uh, Ebenezer. Maybe when Jesus was Ebenezer age, one, two years, three years, he was running around like any other child. If there was a nappy then, the mom uh, changed his nappy, uh, cried when he left food. So that is the historical Jesus. We saw in Matthew chapter 1, uh, the Bible gave the genealogy of Jesus Christ from the time of Abraham right to the time of David, and those genealogy was 14 generations. So that is the historical context of Jesus Christ. So when we introduced the historical Jesus in part three, we essentially wanted to talk about Jesus as a Jew, the Jesus that we know as a Jew. But then we said, Although it is important to have that background, but that historical Jesus is not the most important Jesus. Who is the most important Jesus? When we got to part four, we started talking about the most important Jesus. The most important Jesus is the faith Jesus. So there is a historical Jesus, which is the human Jesus, because the Bible describes Jesus as God reincarnates a man. So, but the one that is very relevant that Jesus will be asking you and I about when we meet him at the white throne judgment is the one we're talking about. The one that died on the cross, the one that shed his blood on the cross, the one that reconciled us back to God, the one that gave us authority uh, uh, that allows us to be able to call God our Father. That is the most important one. So we did the faith Jesus in part five, then moved to uh, uh, part five, continued with the faith Jesus because of the importance of it. Then we moved to part six also, and in part six, we also dealt with the faith Jesus. And then part seven, we also dealt with the faith Jesus. And then we moved to part eight, we dealt more on the faith Jesus because of the importance of the subject matter. Yesterday, 
was part nine. And from yesterday, we started looking at the benefits of the name of Jesus Christ. So yesterday, we essentially looked at some important uh, perspective of Jesus Christ, the benefit. We spoke about one of the benefits of Jesus Christ being uh, giving us peace. That was what we spoke about yesterday. And we said because the benefit of Jesus, there are so many of them, we couldn't cover that in one session. We said today, if we come back, we are going to examine further the benefit of Jesus, the benefit of the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So what we are going to do here now is to start looking at scriptures. There are a few more benefits that the name of Jesus presents to us. How many of us have our Bibles with us? If you have a lift up your book, that Bible says, this is my Bible. Okay. Have you got it on your phone? Okay, if you have it on your phone, it's okay. If you have it, man, I'm saying, this is my Bible. This Bible, this Bible, is, Bible. is very important, very important. To, me. to me. I will read this Bible. I will, this Bible. I will now go ahead and study this Bible. After studying this Bible, I will engage with this Bible. Therefore, I will flow in the power of the living God. Amen. Before we start looking at the word of God, when we read our Bible, our Bible is like this. When we study our Bible, our Bible is like this. So, reading our Bible, like those of us who were here when we did the Sunday school this morning, what we're teaching at the Sunday school is the Bible and the believer. Hallelujah. It was a very explosive session this morning, and I thought those of us who were here would agree it was a very conversational meeting. So we read our Bible when our Bible looks, if you say anybody that their Bible looks like this, they are doing what? They are reading it. If all the pages of our Bible is like this, we are doing what? We are reading it. When we start studying our Bibles, then we see things like this. Okay, when we study it, we begin to mark it. Yes? When we start engaging with the Bible, we start writing notes. You can't see my Bible here, but there, there's a note here. It's not just the highlighting. I begin to write around it. Another writing here. So we read it, we carry it in our head. We study it, it comes in our mind. We engage it, it enters our spirit. Where would you prefer the word of God to be in us? Yeah. Yeah. When we read the Bible, it's in our head. And if the Bible is in our head, what is it? It is letter. Amen. When we study it, okay, we are studying it, it's already coming to our mind. But we need to lock it into our spirit man. When you lock it into your spirit man, it means it's now living in us. We are sleeping, it's, it's with us sleeping. We are going to Tesco, it's coming with us to Tesco. We have hidden it inside of us so that we don't sin against God. One of the most, the greatest advantage of engaging with the word of God Nobody can live holy without engaging the word of God. If you are a 14-year-old child, 16-year-old child, 13-year-old child, and your parents are not there, what will keep you still focused when your parents are not looking at? The word of God that our parents have helped us to hide in our heart. Do you know it's very difficult for any child to survive in our present day world without the word of God hidden in their heart? Our children are grappling with so many things. They are up against so many things. The days that have gone when we go to Sunday school and we just recite Bible to our children. 
We should get to the, we should get to the point now where from even from the children's class, from year three, from, from uh, uh, the age of three, four, five, let's start locking the Bible into their spirit man. Because if we say the time we're living is dangerous, we haven't seen anything yet. More is still coming. Are you listening to me? And the devil is very much interested for children from a Christian home. So now is not the time we look at, uh, we go, I mean, it's good to share Bible in pictorial video, etc. with children, but let, let, let's not think they are too young to lock scriptures into them because they can't be too young to go to school. Once they start getting to three, four, five, you, then, I mean, you have to take them to school most, whether we like it or not. So they can't be too young to lock scriptures into their hearts. Let's help them, support them, even if they take, like, no matter how long they are, encourage them, take about five, ten minutes quiet time by yourself. At three, four, five years, six years, seven years, it may be a bit difficult for them to focus for about 30 minutes. But even if it's 10, 10 minutes, let them know that it is a good practice to have a separation time with the Lord. Does it make sense? Yes. What we're talking about quiet time, one of us here, share the testimony here at church, share in this church. No, no, one we are at Old Road. So that we're talking about People must have a quiet time with the Lord, they have to separate with the Lord, they have to separate with the Lord. So we we'll keep teaching it. So the person in this church now said, okay, we are hearing that no matter how busy we are, we need to take set out some time every day to have a one to one with the Lord. So they had it and then they said, okay, let's I will start doing it because I had the choice to say that. So this person keep doing it sometimes because they are a busy person. After some time, then they start doing it. So let's start with 10 minutes, let's start with 15 minutes. So sometimes they start doing it, they will sleep off. But still, they are still trying. See that? So one day, they started doing the quiet time, and then they slept off in between the quiet time. They been tired, and they couldn't. They just slept. As they slept, they found themselves in a the dream. You know what was happening to them in the dream? They saw somebody pulling out snakes from them. So deliverance was happening just because they're listening to quiet time. We must lock our children in from any stage. Tell them this is the time for your quiet time. Um, uh, for them to have their one to one with the Lord, very important. So we engage the scripture by locking the scripture in our spirit. So when the things we are struggling with, when we have enough word of God in it, it will come. Arrogance, for example, when we see that God says he will resist the proud, but give grace to the meek. And we understand what it means for God to resist someone. King Nebuchadnezzar, when God resisted him, do we know where he ended up? He ended up in the forest and became an animal, from palace to forest. So when we read some scriptures and understand what it means, and know that God has power to lift one up and have power to put another down, when we lock scriptures into our, the best way to live holy is to lock scriptures inside of us. Put it that way. If this place is too hot, we can put the air conditioner on. How many of us when the circulation said no, okay. There's all of but if you feel it's too hot, we can put the air conditioner on. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I will read my Bible. I will read my Bible. I will study my Bible. I will, Bible. I will engage my Bible. I will engage my Bible. I will lock it in my spirit for the rainy day. In the name of Jesus Christ. six sessions, how to sustain your deliverance. But although we took 36 sessions to teach that topic, sustainable deliverance, there is nothing that delivers human being more than the word of God. We can learn how some people or administration can be going up, people fall under the anointing, 
But if you want to keep it, if we want to keep deliverance, this is it. Why? Thank you. Jesus said the demon was cast out of somebody. The demon went to waterless places looking for a place to stay. He couldn't find. He came back and then the place where they left was swept and kept clean. But empty. So the demon went and brought seven more people. Seven more demons stronger than themselves and their, their last step was worse than the first step. In other words, people who are not ready yet to even begin to masticate the word of God and put it in their spirit man is a dangerous thing to do deliverance for them. Is it making sense now? Yes. It's dangerous because when we are going to see very soon that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is Lord to the God. So it's not about the demons screaming and going, it will go to most. But is, are we able to sustain what has happened? And the way to sustain what has happened is to fill the space where whatever left with the word of God. So that when the demon comes back, then he finds the word of God. One way to know when somebody has been delivered at no uncountable times by the grace of God for so many occasions. If you minister deliverance effectively to somebody, one thing they will tell you is that they feel light in their spirit. That is one indication. Why are they feeling light? Because something is spirit. Spirits have weight. Holy Spirit have weight. Demons have weight. That is why the Bible talks about eternal weight of glory. The weight that the glory of God has is the positive weight. The same way when demon comes on people, demon come, uh, demon comes with the weight of heaviness. Yeah. When the glory of God comes, it comes with weight, but it's a weight that sometimes when the presence comes, sometimes we find it difficult to even we, 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 we find it difficult to talk. Not because we can't talk, not because we become dumb, but we find it difficult because we are very gracious in our speech. That is a difference. Hallelujah. Benefit number two of the name of Jesus Christ is the benefit of reconciliation. A sister came some time ago to the church. By the grace of God, as we were praying, she came after seven, she came. So let's pray for her. Okay, we sat down, we're praying, and praying, and praying, and praying. And by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, the glory going to God, uh, God uh, put it in my heart, in my mouth, to say, you strong man in her life, I command you out. As soon as that, I made that statement, she was like shocking. <laughs> People were around you thought she was going to die. That statement, you strong man, in the name of Jesus, I command you out. She was sitting down. Go like that. <laughs> and if you were around, you think she was going to die. The demon was going. The demon have different ways of manifesting, isn't it? They yawn, they jump, they do all kind of things. And after the Lord just day, she found out the power of God under the anointing. And they spent some time on the floor. Eventually, as soon as she woke up, you know when that thing was happening, obviously when demons are going out of people, they don't, they don't know what is happening. They can't tell you. If you are doubting me, if you've seen anybody where in a deliverance session or prayer session, somebody, spirits are speaking out through people. If you ask them after that session, they can't tell you what they said because they are in a different world. They, can't, they don't know. But as soon as she came up, she spent some time on the floor. As soon as she got up, you know the first she said, she touched herself like somebody touched the laptop for me. Touched the laptop. Somebody just just touch it, your yeah, hand. Just touch it so that the screen does not go off. As soon as she got up the floor, do you know the first thing she said? Say something left me, something left me, something left me. Hallelujah. self consistent she feels very light. Someone said the spiritual world is real. 
the spiritual world is real. Second Corinthians chapter 5, quickly now, let's get through some scriptures if time allows us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, please. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Ministry of reconciliation. We who were once dead in sin, Jesus reconciled us back to God. Benefit number two, start, uh, full, uh, continue from yesterday, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm going to read from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, read from verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Another wonderful benefit. All things becomes old things. Hallelujah. Amen. All things become what? Old things. They passed away. It means that the deities that our father signed up to, no matter what occult group they belong, no matter what satanic uh, 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 deity they were worshipping, and in most cases, when they want to enter, they, they throw their children along. Some of us are coming to church today, you come with your children because you want your children to be part of the assembly. That is true also how when people join anything, they register their children. Some of them are even covenanted from birth. And when they are covenanted from birth, it becomes difficult because the devil now calls those people lawful captive. Some people have some shrines in people's family, people's town. And you see somebody who is in a very high profile position, they'll say, oh, did you want to the concert at home? Seriously? Did you the light banker, serious banker? They said, did you not want anybody home? <laughs> and if the person is not born again and the juju wants them and they refuse, what do you think will happen? The juju will follow the person up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Because there is a covenant in the land where the person comes from, and that juju is absent because your father's entered into this covenant. It's now your turn to come and be the Ubebuno. But here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, the wonderful work that Jesus did for you and I means that the work that Jesus did for us overrides whatever our Father entered on our behalf. Do you know parents are so powerful? Parents are so spiritually powerful in their children's life. There are some things that our parents put us into, it only takes the work that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary for us to be liberated from it. If a man becomes born again, the name of Jesus rescued you and I from the past. We are disconnected, separated, liberated from whatever covenant it is, it can no longer apply to you and I. Some of the way to know patterns, where there's a cut of the running in the covenant, you see the son or you see the family members, almost all of them, they are sleeping, serpent is worrying them, almost, almost every member of the family is either serpent, 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 serpent. So, there's probably a serpent that somebody worshipped in the family and entered everybody into that serpentine goddess. The benefit of the name of Jesus means that once you and I sign up to the name of Jesus, the blood and the power that is what Jesus did overrides our Father's authority over us. If a father places a curse upon a child, in most cases, pastors cannot even lift those curses. Especially if there's a good grounds for that happening. The only thing that can quickly override curses that parents put upon people is this scripture. 
Number one is repentance. If you've done anything terrible, repent. Then secondly, once there is that repentance, first John chapter 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, God is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, salvation process cannot conclude unless we repent. So the process of salvation is number one, we need to believe we are sinners, repent of all our sins, believe that Jesus died and rose again, and then ask him to become our Lord and Savior. So when we become born again, then we have asked for forgiveness. Anything that anybody placed upon us can no longer hold. That is Israel's way to break curses that parents put upon us. I think the parents should not be cursing their children anyway, no matter how bad they are. Parents are meant to bless, but some parents curse their children. Parents should not be cursing children. If parents begin to cause their children, then they are, they are abusing their rights. God gave them the power to bless and cause. How many of us prefer to bless our children instead of causing them? I prefer to bless them. Hallelujah. The easiest way to take your neck off that, this is the scripture. But again, it's not this scripture that we read. It's a scripture we do what? We read it, we study it, and we do what? Engage it. Amen. When we engage it, it means spiritually it has become real. And that spirit of serpent will just walk off like this. Once we engage with scripture, there are some generic scriptures if you connect with them. This one now, which serpent do we start this one when we engage when it becomes real? When we understand that a man becomes born again, all things have passed away, is a new creation, everything has become new. The reason we are still swimming in the river when we sleep is because this scripture has not come alive yet. It is true and it is the word of God. But there is a difference between the word of God and the will of God. The word of God becomes the will of God when we engage with it and put it in our spirit man. The word of God is there for everybody to take, but the word of God will work for those that take it. The way to take the word of God and benefit from the word of God is to what? Engage with the word of God, rub it into our spirit man, and our deliverance comes. Are you listening to me? It's that simple. side, 
those masquerade that change people. May that be a history in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 18. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself. So, number one, we have been liberated from the past. Why? Because Jesus took us from where we used to be and reconciled us back to God. And all things are of God who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and had given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Praise Jesus. So benefit number two, number three, number three, number two is that we have been, the yoke of bondages and covenant has been destroyed. Number two, number three, we have now been reconciled to the Lord. Number four, we talk about authority. Okay, we can leave authority to the end. We talk about God being our Father, personal Father. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Quickly now, let's finish quickly now. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16 tells us that because of what Jesus did, Jesus is no longer a distant Jesus. God made us his personal children through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 6 to 16. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Don't worry about that. Stay put. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry what? We said in the past, the Old Testament is a mechanical way of doing things. I think some people are calling me sense in this property, that's why, don't worry about that. The Old Testament, we said, is what? A mechanical way of doing things. We described the Old Testament and those days when people, about 1980s, when you have your passbook, internet, online banking is not around. If you want to do your transaction in the 80s, what do you do? You go into the bank. And then you have the hard pass bank passbook there. You bring that hard pass passbook, they say, how much do you want? I want 25 pounds. They take 25 pounds, they use something like that, they write it on the passbook. How many of us experienced that? And then they give it to you. How many of us were doing online banking in 1982? Nobody. So in 1982, the only way to get your money from the bank was to do what? To walk into the bank. <laughs> if the bank closes, they closes. You wait till the next day. If it's the Sunday, you wait till Monday. The Old Testament is like the analog world of doing things. When people go, somebody go, there's something they check out there. Check this place. When people go physically to the bank, to do transaction because there's no online presence. So they meet with God every now and then. The New Testament is like the online banking. How many of us have our bank on our phone these days? So if Samisha, for example, says, Samisha, can you pass me about 10 million pounds? Amen. I saw Samisha, so okay, don't worry, when I get home. But even as we are now, she can punch it. So, she had access to her banking system 24-7. Salvation is like online transaction. It gives us access to Jesus 24-7. We now call God our Father. Why? Because we are now living with God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says we are now seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So 
Now, the greatest benefit of all is that the name of Jesus offers us the opportunity to spend eternity with God in heaven. I didn't say it guarantees us. Are you listening to me? The name of Jesus is not a guarantee to eternity. It depends on what we do with the name. If we accept Jesus as salvation and walk with Jesus all the way to rapture or to leave the earth, then we will end up in heaven. If we accept, if we are in the church, for example, and we are not born again, the name of Jesus does not allow people who are not born again to enter into heaven. Are you listening to me? The name of Jesus will not allow unbeliever to enter into heaven. What the name of Jesus will do for you is to save you and the Holy Spirit, when Jesus saves us, he hands us over to the Holy Spirit. Some of us will be born again, Jesus saves us, but we refuse the personality of the Holy Spirit, or we exclude the Holy Spirit. And there is no way anybody can go to heaven without the Holy Spirit. Trying to go to heaven without the Holy Spirit is like somebody who is left at rapture. When rapture happens, grace ceases. Anybody who has to go to heaven after rapture has to go to heaven by strength. How many people can go to heaven by strength? So people get born again. The job of Jesus is to save us. Once Jesus saves us, he hands us over to the Holy Spirit. The next time Jesus shows up more predominantly in the divine order is at the white throne judgment. Because he's going to be the judge at the white throne judgment. During this time on earth, the person that has the day-to-day -day support mechanism for us is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he goes to his father, but let our heart not be troubled because he's going to send us another comforter who will teach us all things. In other words, who is going to be like our hands on supervisor here on earth, the person and the the Holy Spirit. So people accept Jesus as their Lord, but have not fully engaged with the Holy Spirit, and so Christianity becomes a drag. Rise with you with me, because of time. People accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but the missing link becomes they are not fully connected with the Holy Spirit. And if we don't connect with the Holy Spirit, then it becomes a struggle. You will not be seven. You will make it to heaven. You will make it to heaven. Anytime we wake up and we feel like, am I really a Christian? Something is missing. It means that we are probably not bringing the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to be on board fully. The Holy Spirit can be on board fully and we are still asking ourselves whether we are Christians. Inside of challenges and difficulties, the Holy Spirit will be with us inside the fire. Fire is not palatable. We're not saying it's a very palatable experience. But inside of that fire, why do you think that Paul and Silas were able to praise God in prison? It's not normal. It's not carnal. It's supernatural. Why do you think that the Hebrew boys survived in fire? Still praising God inside fire. It's not natural. It's, it's more than supernatural. Lamo Sakana Ramadish. Bear with us with your lamb. Libro no do Shabrana da Sotoya. Yere Babara Brana do Satamaya. Yere Babara Bado Sataya. Baro Sarade O Shabaya. Yere Brana do Satara Badaya. Lift up your voice. Let's worship the Lord. 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 Worship the Lord.
you. We worship you. We adore you. We return our glory unto you. In the name of Jesus. As we go this week, Lord, go with us. Let your presence tabernacle with us. Shield us from all evil. In the name of Jesus. We come back next week to give testimonies. The avalanche testimonies of what you have done in our lives, in our families, and in our finances. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are doing thanks. May we share the fellowship, Lord. May we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be the Lord with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.